So we're going to be looking at the LCD3. LCD3 is probably the most common one that you'll see. And first things first, when we turn it on, we want to press up and down together. And that's going to bring us into our programming menu. So uh, if you have the display on for more than 10 seconds, when you press and hold up and down, you're going to be able to reset your trip meter and it's going to flash. You press the middle button and it's reset. But if you want to enter programming settings, you have to turn the display on and then right away press and hold that up down. And that's going to bring you first into your speed limit setting. Uh, stock uh, parameter is 72. Press the middle button. It's going to go to your wheel size. You can go up and down to change that. Press the middle button again. It's going to ask for kilometers versus miles per hour, which you can change. Middle button again, and everything stops flashing. So now you press and hold up and down again, and it's going to enter us into our P settings. So P1 is going to, P1 and P2 are for how the speed reads on the motor. So P1, the stock setting is 87. This is a common setting for geared motors. The next, um, if you have a direct drive motor, then often you're going to use 46. And 46 relates to the amount of magnets that's in the motor. Uh, you would multiply the magnets by the gear reduction ratio. So on a direct drive, there's no gear reduction. But on a lot of geared motors, there's about a 5 to 1 uh, gear reduction. P2 is going to be how many um, pulses that the motor gives um, per revolution. So a lot of times a direct drive motor, you can set it to zero because it doesn't give any pulses. It's just uh, registering um, one revolution is um, through the hall sensor, I believe. And then if you set it to one, um, it means that whatever speed, usually one to six is for a geared motor. Um, a lot of the Bafang motors, they have six magnets inside, so every revolution it gets six pulses. Uh, so a lot of Bafang geared motors will be set to six. Most of our motors are set to either one or zero. One for our geared motors, like the MXUS uh, motors, and then zero for any of the thousand watt. Uh, press middle to go to the next. It's going to be P3. Um, this is going to control our throttle. So if P3 is set to 1, you have full throttle power uh, at any point, as long as your assist is set to 1. If P3 is at 0, then your throttle will be limited based on what assist level you're at. So assist level 1, minimum throttle. Assist level 5, maximum throttle availability. So we generally set that to 1 so that you have full throttle availability um, at all at all times. P4 is your throttle again. So if you are at a dead stop, uh, zero allows your throttle to work, and one does not allow your throttle to work. So dead stop, they call it a zero startup. I would recommend keeping that at zero so that if you're at a traffic light, uh, twist the throttle and it's going to work. And P5 is your battery um, display. So you can set this to zero if you want, um, and it will kind of always read the battery voltage. But if you want it to give you a smoother, um, less jerky output of your battery indicator, then you can set that. Usually we set to 12 for a 36 volt battery, uh, 15 for a 48 volt battery, and then if you have a 52 volt battery, we set that up to 22. Press middle button again. P5 stops flashing, there's no more flashing. To enter the C settings, press and hold up and down again. And that's going to bring us to C1. So C1 is flashing. This is for the pedal assist sensor. So generally for, our, for the basic pedal assist sensors, we have that set to 2. Um, and then for the splined, like the KT V12L, or the two-piece disc with snap ring, uh, KT D12L, then you'd set that to 7. So you can play with that. 2 or 7 are generally the ones that we use. Um, if you notice that when you pedal backwards, 
and your pedal assist sensor is picking up and your pedal assist is working only when backwards and try to flip flop that uh, go from 2 to 7 or 7 to 2 and you may very well find that your pedal assist works C2 is uh, a generally unnecessary setting um, we never touch it, it's for the motor phase C3 is your pedal assist level when you first turn on the bike so if you set it to 1 your pedal assist will always be 1, set it to 0 uh, it'll always be zero when you first turn on the bike, or you can set it to eight, and it will remember whatever your last setting was before you powered the bike off. So we can set that to zero. Uh, it's a safe bet. C4 is uh, your throttle again, so throttle always working. Um, if C4 is equal to zero, or if you have uh, C4 equal to one, then your throttle is going to be working. Um, you, there's actually a bunch of different parameters. You can look in the manual, but if you want your throttle to only um, give you up to six kilometers per hour uh, until you start pedaling, uh, a few things that you can play with. I would just generally recommend setting, keeping that at zero, just allowing yourself to have full access to your throttle. This is a big one. C5 is your current control. So how much power your motor is going to take from the controller. Having this at 10 is the maximum current. If you set it, um, if you set it at three, interestingly, it will divide that maximum current value by two. So it'll be half the power. Um, and then you can also set it to zero, one, or two. Um, and 0, 1, and 2 give a soft start and then uh, give the rest of the current. So we often will set it to 0 because 0 is soft initial start and then full power. And the soft initial start uh, tends to save dropouts and makes the throttle really nice and smooth, um, especially for front wheel setups. I generally recommend setting that to 0. Um, really smooths it out. Uh, C6 is your backlight adjustment, so you can see that moving as that goes up and down. C7 is cruise control. This one's pretty cool. So if cruise control C7 is set to zero, that means cruise is off. If it's set to one, that means that when you're riding, say you're going 20 kilometers an hour and you want to maintain that speed, you can press and hold up and the assist value will go from the number and it'll turn to C and it will hold whatever speed that you're traveling at. Then you can press the brakes or you can press a button on the uh, up and down or you can twist the throttle and cruise control will come off but that does allow you to use a cruise control. C8 is enable motor temperature. Um, most of the motors don't have a motor temperature signal so uh, usually you just leave this at zero unless your motor does for sure have a motor temperature uh, sensor inside then this will allow it to be displayed when it's set to one. C9 is password. Uh, I would really recommend skipping this because if you accidentally enter a password then you're gonna have to remember what it is and you can lock yourself out. I believe the the general password is 555 Okay, C11 is communication protocol. So uh, like we were talking about before, if you lock your display out um, by having a password you can't remember, communication protocol is one of the steps for recovering it. Um, this is generally not a used setting. C12 is low voltage cutoff. So if you are low voltage cutoff, um, there's, a, there's a chart in the manual that shows um, what they are for the controller. Most BMSs will have a low voltage cutoff, but if you want to uh, lower it a little bit, you can lower it by setting it below four. If you want to raise it, you can set it above four. So if you have, um, if you find the controller is cutting it off a little too early and you want a little bit more range, you can lower it down. Um, or if your battery is uh, 
kind of crappy and you or you just won't really want to protect it and you don't want it getting low then you can set it so that it's higher uh, so we'll leave that at four uh, c13 is regenerative braking so you can set um, regenerative braking on these displays uh, from zero to five so i believe zero is no regenerative braking one is a little bit two three four five is the max um, so if you have a direct drive motor, not a geared motor, but a uh, gearless direct drive, unless it's like a GMAC, uh, but a direct drive motor is able to do regenerative braking. Just make sure you obviously have a torque arm uh, because your axle is going to want to move in both directions, acceleration, decel deceleration, and your axle can wiggle itself loose um, with enough regenerative braking. And then C14 is your overall pedal assist multiplier. So two is default. I like to set this to one because when you set it to one and then your pedal assist level is one, um, you can have a very small amount of pedal assist so you can really fine tune it. Uh, I generally find that on the default two, um, pedal assist levels four and five are almost useless because you might as well just be using the throttle on level one, I find that four is still useful. Um, even five, if you're in a in a in a headwind, um, yeah, it just lowers that that number. And that is it. So those are all the values. Press and hold up and down, um, or press and hold middle button to exit. Yes. So press and hold middle button to exit, and. That's a look at how to program the LCD3 display and it's the exact same procedure for the LCD5 and it's even easier with the LCD8.